Hello, and welcome to another episode. Um, I'll try and stop talking in a pervy voice. Give me time. Bear with me. Um, right, so woke up this morning. Had these little thoughts in my head. I thought, well don't really want to do this kind of thing because does this destroy my credibility? Um, does it um, will it sort of remove the ability to have any kind of um, like public interviews where I could speak to economists and discuss geopolitics and all those kind of things in my little fanatical mind where I was going, oh no, if I if I start talking about these things, this is uh, all going to be lost. But after a while, I just had to say to myself, come on, be brave. What's the point in just... Uh, being a, a tiny little man who just speaks about a bit of politics, a bit of uh, economics, and whittles away and talks about subject matter with a little bit of understanding, but never, never really pushes the boat out for understanding. So, what I wanted to do. Because I was sort of last night writing out my um, description of what the podcast was, the um, the major, the first line pretty much was, um, this is my exercise on uh, philosophic um, thought. <laughs> and so far, I mean, I was, I've just been doing podcasts on big new subjects, a um, little bit about addiction, a little bit about um, Bitcoin, which are, are fairly, I guess maybe the most controversial one was um, addiction, and um, I seem to get a lot more sort of uh, positive reviews of <laughs> the ones which are a little bit more risque compared to the ones which are easygoing sort of uh, mainstream news articles and stuff like that so maybe the marketplace is asking me to for me to explore ideas a little bit further now <clears throat> I guess this is, comes to the point of uh, what the subject matter is um, I guess you probably got it on the title um, I wanted to understand and start to talk about um, philosophic thought in itself and my sort of uh, lifespan and what happened to me at different stages and where it got me and things like that. So let me speak a little bit about my life. Um, so when I was fairly young, um, not compared to when kids were, uh, well, kids are young nowadays where they play on their iPads and they're continuously occupied, um, never have a moment to look outside and ponder. Um, I was that, that young kid, that young boy, and I never really had the greatest interest in books. I never had the greatest interest um, in um, embarrassing myself and talking out aloud in front of other people. I never, um, although I did make a, a lot of um, friends, um, yeah, I, I wasn't sort of um, outgoing. I wasn't sort of... Uh, I didn't have major signs of um, 
academic intelligence. I did have um, early on. I was I don't know whether this is um, true, but it was I was diagnosed with um, dyslexia, which meant I was fairly good at mathematics and had a fairly high sort of pattern recognition with IQs and and things like that. But um, my English skills uh, was were incredibly um, poor. Uh, so there was some kind of like little signs that there was something switched on inside me, but not necessarily that it would ever be able to get out and it will be able to in in the school academic sort of field I will be able to sort of transfer my thoughts into any um, applicable uh, field of study now going back to when I was a kid I, I just remember just sort of um, laying back staring at a wall and things like that and, and thinking about uh just endless possibilities um thinking far behind like what what had happened um before me what was my earliest memory could i me memorize that um would have was there anything was there any sort of um spiritual being or anything like that that was occurring before I had been born, so that was there some kind of like uh, heavenly play out before where I was to choose my soul to to enter in before I I came on this earth. Was there there's those kind of thoughts? Was there um what was the what is the the furthest point away from where we are and uh, does the does space go on any further from that point, and where does that ex extend to? Um, what brings me here? Who a who am I? All of those thoughts entered into my mind from a a very very early age, from ah oh, probably about three or four. And I guess um, this isn't a unique story to me. I guess it's unique. It's um, to everyone. It applies to that. Everybody had a philosophic mind at first to understand the environment of which they they came from, from where it extends to mapping their lands, mapping their horizons. What what is powerful in this world? What is not powerful in this world? Um, children always try and grab the most uh, dangerous items that you could possibly find because um, they know that it contains the most power over their parents it's, um, it's an amazing sort of uh, ideal that a young person in this world is an instant philosopher that uh, is a de developing mind which can continuously expand on its ideas and everything else. And as I progressed um, through um, the early stages of my life from five to all the way up till probably about nine where school was fairly like obviously the, the the earliest signs of school was fairly young it was more creative based I had there was a little bit more of an open ended field structure of where I could be creative and I really reveled and enjoyed in sort of stretching my abilities of what I could think of and things like that but it was rather than to what I chose would be uh, an interesting field to me it was in the pursuit of making my teachers pleased with my performance uh, rather than me trying to push myself into how far I could go 
which is a little bit of a containing mythology of what I could do. I, I remember one thing that I I did once when I was couldn't have been any older than maybe nine at most. Is I um, I set up this little uh, faction clan of little a group of boys with me, and I said we're gonna invent this uh, new vehicle and um, I will be the, the designer of it and um, the way it would work is that we would build this um, this wooden um, or whatever material that we could find structure um, which we had the ability to in like it, we had a number of slots uh, for our bicycles which could interconnect into the um, the gearing structure and we had a little uh, steering wheel at the front and we would have the power and the ability of all of our um, bicycles combined to com to create this uh, mega vehicle which probably would have if it would have been pursued any further would have probably just thrown up about a million different failure points on the way but it was great designs great idea plans all those kind of things but I didn't really find that they got much further it was um, an idea that I put forward and things like that but then the kids maybe I was looking for a little bit more help and uh, Maybe I didn't engage adults for these materials. I, I think a lot of kids would say, yeah, I can get this and I can get that. The the promises never occur. And um, I accepted the failures at the very onset and decided that, that it wasn't possible any further. Little did I know that if the project was ever going to happen, it would have required me to literally push heaven and earth to push this idea and momentum to get everyone inspired and everyone controlled with me and to have even if I felt bad and got out of bed every day for me to push this ideal and yet the problems I would have as, as well is that because I would be living in a structured environment of schooling I would not be able to pursue this idea for much longer than a um, couple of hours at most before the next day changes and probably I wouldn't be able to do that again until um, the evening or or something else and then once the evening occurs I've got too many distractions dinner um, or TV which um, would supersede in my mind or not necessarily supersede in your importance but just sort of tantalize me further than the actual uh, pursuing of my goal um, so that that thought sort of um, those kind of ideas and uh, things which I, I knew from the start was great and I knew it was something positive but I never never quite realized and I never understood why the failure occurred and that was probably the most important thing to have understood in that whole lesson um yeah i never never sort of um took on board the um the actual uh i never took the study of actually understanding why the failure occurred maybe failure was something that i didn't really uh want to exercise uh, in my mind it was an uncomfortable feeling and um i absorbed myself again in tv and friends and play and stuff like that and just moved on from that point i guess it's um i'm putting a lot onto a young person's shoulders but it's interesting how you you potentially have the sparkle of a great mind and then they those kind of things can uh, unravel it very quickly. Um, so, p 
consuming of um, philosophic thoughts with um, as I developed um, and got older I um, I did notice that probably my father had a very good a fairly good um, philosophic stroke comedian sort of mind where he <clears throat> He would be able to have endless conversations and be very wise as well. Literally the failure in every const um, constraint when it came to academia. But in, in terms of um, giving a life insight and being funny and um, developing a long conversation with multiple people, being the most one of the most confident people in the rooms being one of the most knowledgeable one, uh, ones in the rooms when it comes to just general factual knowledge um, he would be uh, one of the one of the, easily um, the highest one in the room majority of the time um, which I guess is a is a little bit of a anomaly really because um, a man who's who didn't really get any sort of certification or anything of recognition can walk around people and instantly find that he can give out more wisdom and um, insights than most others who have got a well-studied um, sphere I'm, is, um, it's kind of strange um, Fairly interesting conversations I would have with my dad, and he um, he never had the um, any sort of um, argument which would get him out of um, sort of tone or anything like that with me and he was very easy going he would always sit down and I remember some, some certain things that he would always say to me which um, which would get me a little bit annoyed but then I understand he was obviously a very family based man and he would always say that um, if there was any sort of sign of trouble and um, you was in a fight you would run away straight away from that trouble and there is there is no loss of face from you um, coming home and all those kind of things from from uh, from that situation so he would he was um, obviously he was concerned of like me ever getting into trouble or violence or anything like that so he who would ensure that he, he was always st stood by the fact that if there was any trouble, you would remove yourself from that. I, be I guess that ensures his policy of keeping me alive if ever I, there was trouble and all those kind of things, which was fairly well thought out. Um, I guess it. I guess I was sort of more. I was more taken up in the thing of being the brave person, being the one who would side with his friends and um, when things got bad against against and against the wall that you would just continue and um and fight on until your last breath but i okay, that was sort of esteemed in me i guess i had grandparents that would teach me how to uh punch and things like that and they would um they would be more on the sort of the violent side of things um so yeah very sort of an interesting dynamic and did sort of ponder on thoughts. I, I do remember one time where, just in the in the in the sense, I'm not sure whether this is still in the realms of. I guess this is um, in a fair amount of morality, but um, I guess this is uh, with his sort of style of things because I th I think he was um, a bit of a, a thief um, in his day, is that he would. Um, he would always pursue that the the most important thing was um, for me not to be a liar to him, but to be um, honest at most times. And uh, once I 
I think I was just literally um, in the hallway once and I remembered that coins could, um, when I went down to the shops, could deliver me some sort of value. I can get some sweets in exchange for these um, these coins. Um, and I noticed that my dad would have this little uh, jacket and it would have his wallets and all, all kinds of stuff and a bulk load of change. And I thought, well, this bulk load of change probably doesn't really have much of a use for it when I was feeling around. Um, maybe there was a good few days where I was just playing around with it where I wouldn't even do anything with it. I would just leave it there and... Um, just wonder what, like what, what that jacket was, playing around with it, all those kind of things. And um, maybe the, at the back of my mind I was sort of pursuing sort of that the means of uh, maybe taking it but I, I was just sort of studying it and then one day I just thought okay well he's not really going to notice these coins going missing so I will take a few and I guess I probably determined what were the most uh, the more valuable ones were to get to the least valuable ones so I would take the least valuable coins keep them from myself so obviously th this is probably where you, you first give a, a piggy bank to a child and they start pursuing their own savings and um, as always with um, with a thief um, I started to and addiction as well is that the the first um, theft from my father was um, was quite good um, wasn't was very small and wasn't really much. Um, the next time was pretty much the same, but it wasn't quite as um, returning, and I had become accustomed to that amount of money. I think it would have been even just something s silly that I was only e the only reason means that I could have possibly been using it for is either sweets or even savings as well. So I'm pursuing my own savings in uh, the diminishment of my father. <laughs> so um, I was uh, taking a, f um, a few more coins and obviously that wasn't enough. So then ev eventually I was going onto the, the gold coins, the pounds, the uh, um, all those kind of coins, if there was multiples of those. Um, but um, I think the greed got too much for me, and it I, it must have gone on for a very long time. I wouldn't have even expected it for um, to have got on t for so long. But um, as it just wasn't being noticed, and uh, I was um, getting away with it, it was just um, the the theft was getting more and more ridiculous, and um, nobody was really noticing what was happening until one day my dad walked in and says I would like to um, ask you a question Ross now before I ask you this question there's one thing that's more important to me and that is um, I never mind a thief I've never minded a thief in my life. I've got good friends that who are thieves in my life, and they um, they do these things, and we are perfectly honest with each other, and um, I have no ever issue. But one thing I do not like more than anything else is liars. I cannot stand for liars. I think. Um, it's, it's, it's no good and um, I think very lowly of those so I just want to ask you one question have you been taking um, money out of my jacket now I've never been really pro propositioned in this sort of method before um, and every physical urge of, if, of me was literally trying to desperately say, no, it wasn't me. But I was sort of holding my breath and just sort of uh, 
in a state of semi shock and um it almost had to be another person who actually mentioned this from from my head um it was me and to actually admit to the actual uh a moral act um which was kind of interesting and i guess um there is a moral lesson to be said there is that i guess the the there was um there's one one obviously there's one the, the major one there is that in the pursuit of, of the truth the truth is always more important and the honesty is more important um than the immoral act because if you do not have your honesty then there is no way of actually continuing a relationship and all those kind of things because you do not know where you stand at all times <sighs> which is interesting for a man who's totally uneducated and all those kind of things it's an interesting um, concept and I guess um, it's not necessarily his concept it's probably the mentality of like the thief the um, I know in, in the criminal world and all those kind of things, the snitcher, the person who um, reports people into the police and all those kind of things, uh, that one's always um, highly uh, recognised amongst the criminal community. They have their own moral acts, but um, the, the thief's um, honesty, um, that's, that's, an, that's an interesting one. Um, to to be honest, amongst your thieves is uh, it's a fairly interesting concept. Um, I guess if you if you work in a in a team of thieves and all those kind of things, uh, then it it can actually aid you in the sense that if you know who has stolen what to which, then you can cover for them and all those kind of things. So interesting concepts um <clears throat> so yeah that, that, there's there's the marker of my father on me so and I, I do remember a lot of time where i would be in social situations and i'd be fairly quiet and just um be a little bit too nervous to speak maybe just because um I might have said something out of turn or just um, be laughed at. and um, But yeah, I would be always continuously watching um, the, I guess, the more dominant characters, which would be my father in um, social situations, who would be uh, um, more or less controlling the topic of conversation. He would probably entertain the, an idea and and this and that and... Um, what's, what's a good example of, um, a conversation that I guess it would have to be something in the, in the terms of, um, relevance. Um, I remember something he would mention to me, uh, or oh, no, into, into a group. There, there were some very like funny things that he would mention into a group that, Uh, I guess um, this this isn't a very good one, but um, there was far better ones than this. But he would always mention like, "What's the point of having a, a large house? It's more work to do, all those kind of things." Which I guess is a very good point in relevance to today, especially when you're getting older and all those kind of things. Not that that isn't very ins inspirational as a philo philosophic sort of thought, but there was far greater ones. Um, I remember one where he just says to me that. Um, try and avoid pursuing um uh attractive uh women because um the mind is more important and over time your um the the only thing that you got left is your brain um which fairly good fairly good and i guess he would not have had any sort of real moral instruction um or reading on that um so um praise to him for that sort of um that ideal 
Um, what else? Yeah, I, I'll sort of um, entertain that subject a little bit further. But yeah, very dominating sort of uh, influencing factor there. Um, the, the questions I sort of raise at that point is that, is it the environment of where I'm sort of seeing somebody who's got that that sort of mindset he definitely from the, the common person to the like everybody else he was he was the guy that guy in the pub that you would speak to about um interesting subjects and all those kind of things so that's it's, he he's a pub philosopher he's not necessarily like a he's not really pursuing uh, any kind of study in philosophy but the, the, just a a nat, like a natural sort of um pursue it in that method um i i guess there's um grandmothers as well which were fairly um that way inclined and so would have all that kind of way of speaking so uh, i guess there's and um yeah ma majority of my family um didn't really have much in the way of um academia so yeah interesting sort of uh perspectives there so coming back to me um, as time progressed um, the um, the possibilities of my mind and I was I would always think to myself that um, I had a, a fairly good mind or I had minds which would um, would be good at generating ideas and I, I sort of understood that from I, I, I sort of thought it from a, an early age and I was fairly interested in art and creativity um, all of those pursuits um, but as examinations um, occurred and I did literally zero study for um, all of these examinations I um, didn't achieve any sort of um, uh, level of um, or high grades or any kind of level of um, achievement within school. So um, gradually over time, um, I understood that I wasn't very good. I wasn't um, in in today's society. I wasn't. Um, what was required um i wasn't the uh i wasn't the one that was going to be successful in, in the world and it was shaping my mind as to think well you um this is your destiny this is this is the marker of you this will be where you achieve this will be the level of what you can achieve into the future as well and that will be a riding constant we have this examination has graded you in your and it has been the measure of your future as well this is a prediction of what has happened and as this system and structure is all in place this means that um my final cards have been dealt and at that point there even just from the gradients of um when you're about 11 you can go to a higher school or a lower school i went to the lower school and of the lower school i went into the middle of the lower school so um pretty sort of uh humbling experience um to be in sort of those kind of classrooms and the the classrooms were fairly um of people that were just they weren't any kind of like a, they're very very violent inclined everything about in the moment all about sort of um getting your compass out and um sticking it in each other's legs always having to watch your back all those kind of things so and n never anything of the inspirational thought or how how we can design something so i was trapped in an environment of where of survival and the only sort of preparation that it sort of gave me is to sort of say okay right well you're in the lunatic asylum and um it's, it's survival of the 
of uh, the person who makes the least uh, amount of noise um, can get through this. So um, there I have the, the battered down man who who's now sort of trapped and thought in in his own thoughts of whoa this is um this is not very great i'm now in this system which um has marked me as a failure um so that's a bit diminishing in itself um as time progress progresses um I managed to um, complete my schooling. I never pursued any sort of university. I maybe had a few options there, but the the roads to sort of um, certification wasn't <laughs> there for me anymore. And um, I chose to. Um, to start in uh, in work straight away. Maybe I could be able to be in a workplace environment and just work my way up from that point onwards. Um, which well, I fairly I did fairly well. I I, I was fairly accomplished. I realised that there was um, there's a big gradient of different things. I noticed the wor a working environment is a hell of a lot different to a a schooling environment. At least. Um, uh effort is sort of um recognized a little bit better and um ideas are recognized a little bit better um yeah obviously you're still singing to the same structure of what the business can do but the, um if you come up generate ideas um business minds especially managers sort of enjoy that idea that 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 perspective so you do have those kind of um um, and upgrade it all of a sudden when you you go from a schooling environment to a working environment. Um, and I, I I've achieved so far a fair amount of success, but no, nothing really sort of like uh, incredible. But maybe if I was sort of assessing myself in in a Western culture and in the uh, in the brackets of where I am in the percentiles, maybe I'm in the in the in the global percentiles, maybe I'm in the top twenty percent. I don't know. Um. So yeah, but do I really want to be measured by that? I don't think I really want to be <laughs> measured by that. Um. So next, um. Um. Choosing of um, friends. Now, I would usually have um, just close friends more than anything else and friends that would come around to my house a lot of times. I would always invite people around. I would just be showing them computer games majority of the time, trying to like do all the, um, maybe silly games in my house and stuff like that where we would have... Um, improv improvised play and things like that but um, I would have very close friends and the, the friends that I would obviously uh, be leaning towards more would be the ones that um, could exercise um, a little bit of um, philosophic uh, thought um, with me um, and it's interesting to find that sometimes uh, the ones that um, I I ended up encircling myself um are oh, all fairly good thinkers and um it's always been the way that that I've been inclined I've always in enjoyed the conversation of people that can think and all those kind of things and when when it comes to meeting some people they can live their lives and live in the moment and maybe talk about things which um have happened in the past but not necessarily talk about the future and um, it's maybe maybe me driving the conversation and it hadn't been really much of there wasn't sort of a, a 
conversation where it would be going both way, ways and it would be fairly sort of oh, how'd you do not sort of empty empty conversations with um, little meaning so those kind of conversations would sort of uh, um, that those friendships wouldn't be the like the, the strongest relationships in my in my collection um, yeah yeah the the best and the, the most loyal friends that I would have, yeah, would have those kind of conversations. Plus, um, would have a very good um, comedy aspect to them as well. They'll be having uh, or funny aspect to them, um, very entertaining. Um, I guess some people have the philosophic mind, and some people have a little bit more on the way of sort of um, a uh, a funny mind and and is very entertaining and can be very spontaneous and can channel in their mind to just sort of make things in the moment very funny and um i and obviously the pleasure of those um, people in in your company is always really good as well so that was my sort of inclinement i i did like the deep conversations i did like the um the funny moments as well and um it was always those kind of people that i would like to surround myself with and be interested by um, and um, yeah so so that was that that element so what put me on to the path so um, a good few years ago now probably about four years ago five years ago um my father had a subarachnal brain hemorrhage um but it was to, to the extent that it was so extreme that you um there was no recovery from it it was um such a belief that it it took up all of his mind and only just left the very sort of the inner part of the brain left which was like the um the breathing and um maybe a little bit of flinch re um re reflect um reactions and things like that so um yeah makes you think makes you ponder about uh, life and stuff and um one of the most annoying things about um a death of like somebody's mind is that it's um the their existence is there but yet the mind is gone and um it's a very tormenting um situation to be in especially w when he was um in the comatose state before his death for about a month um which is uh tormenting to say the least now at that point um just had like immediate family around me and I had been very close to my um, cousins all throughout my life. I never had any brothers or sisters and they were the uh, the closest and um, closest people around me. And um, I was, it was an interesting sort of perspective. And at one point, um, the, uh, one of my cousins uh, would mention um, that you have to use positive thought in these moments positive thoughts um has been pr a proven study that um can lead to um can lead to amending sort of uh issues like this and the power of positive thought is um can eventually um answer the problems um and how did that sort of um stand with me i as much as I wanted to believe, I didn't even want to believe it really. I just thought to, to myself that um, I have to stand on the on the on the realms of science here. I know that science can be proven incorrect, but when um, when a judgment is made that there will be no recovery and the 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 only recovery that possibly can be done is um, a, a very vegetized state. Um, that's enough for me. And obviously, if you pursue sort of time, I guess in my mind, the the man was gone, and there will be none none of that like last conversation with the person just before they 
they're gone, which was um, kind of annoying for me. Frustrating, annoying, sorrowful, all of those kind of things. And um, so I, I didn't cho choose it. But then I remember when I was just standing in the hospital, well, we was all in the hospital and things like that. They were talking about um, interesting things and they were talking about all this. Uh, it, it's basically like, what's the way to describe it? The, the, the power of the mind, the mind is special, um, the um, possibilities are infinite, and um, we've been entrapped in our own minds for too long and it's time for us to sort of um, exercise more thought and get out of this... Um, this cage that we're in and um a lot of the influence that was coming from them from their perspective was david ike um which um incredibly interested me because um it, it sort of there there was definitely truths in what was being said or reported to by my cousins um very interesting and it interested me a lot yet there was not much in the way of um, great clarity in, in sort of um, the ideals and stuff like that so it just like interested me it was a drag it was a, it was a um, it incentivized me to sort of um, want to know more um, so I um looked up the man and this is um obviously all this stuff that he he started to speak about was um definitely like a uh, mind blowing in 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 the terms of what he was mentioning because um he he would say um things in the realms that we are energy based beings and we see on certain light waves which is all very factually fi um true and how we he talks about the universe and all these kind of things and it just like a lot of the stuff that he would mention he had a very sort of um i guess this is um this is me trying to find probably maybe enough ideas maybe fight trying to discover my own father in in me um but he he would come up with all these great ideas, and but then, obviously, if you know anything about David Icke, he he does mention things about the the lizards, um, reptilians, and all those kind of things. So, interesting sort of uh, mind um, open. Well, something to open your mind up to, especially when you've literally had zero. Um, philosophical training and nobody's really sort of taught you about any of those things before you might have had it but you didn't really know know when it sort of hit you um, any sort of um, ideas and all of a sudden this man is coming out with um, some fantastic ideas this man obviously has been around for a good 15 years or so and um, and he's coming out with these things which are sending out grenades into my mind as to like the understanding of what reality is, um, who we are, and um, what's the meaning. All of those kind of amazing th uh, thoughts, exercises. And um, it just blew my mind. And uh, we... I just had the skeptic skepticism in my mind of like how much is true and how mu how much is falsehood um but i was definitely swept up in the in the ideas of of what was being generated and it was heavily influential on, on me and maybe it was just the thing of saying okay well this is this has been missing in my life what why hasn't um schooling ever taught me anything about this kind of stuff and um and how how we've sort of um and how our minds have been sort of locked down and all this kind of stuff. There must be something more to this. It's really interesting. I guess, that, um, yeah, how, how 
governments are in control and they're behind conspiracies and all those kind of things like his his David Icke's in it um are very big on conspiracy theories and those things and he he puts forward very good structured sort of um factual documents of how people interlink with other people and how he builds a case which is very interesting to me um and um i guess uh correlation isn't causal but um it was it was fantastic and it was a great mind exercise and one of the the interesting parts of that was um or well, one of the things that I found in later life is that what schooling is meant to be is or well everything that branched from schooling and education um originated in its in its uh from the academy which was um where philosophers originally started they were massively into geometry um the study of maths and stars and how everything moved and all those kind of things and the pursuit of logic logical arguments um which would have been a lovely start for me i would have loved all of that stuff but hey we we're not we're not really taught that at school it's not in the curriculum which is very interesting but yeah i've got this guy who's firing out mind grenades and this is all happening why well just um at the time and after the death of my father so um that's is um the journey of where I am, uh, well, where I was probably about four years ago, um, and where my mind was taking me and where I was looking to for certain answers and maybe the reasons behind where we are and where I've ended up. But, um, yeah, interesting turn of thoughts. I guess, I guess we sort of, um, we do say that like, uh, the, um, this is all happening at the same time as sort of the information age where information is getting out further and further and further and people are, um, people are, uh, have never been able to connect, um, to people more so than ever before. And, um, it's all sort of dovetailing with each other into a, a, a great mix. And this is literally just at the, the start of, um, the pursuit of my um, philosophical mind and trying to um, un make understanding of sense data and reality and um, all of those things. Um, but the, yeah, the, the the major problem I was having with um, David Icke is that he was giving information that I could not. Um, understand as true i sort of had this like mild feeling that it, um i was sort of wanted to believe but then at the back of my mind i just knew that it couldn't be true at the same time um i guess like with the, with a with reptilian thing i try and sort of uh, work it in my mind that um you have this uh you have this creature that has sort of evolved to look um, who's evolved over the years as a bipedal uh, creature, maybe the bipedalness of a creature and enabling you, you to have two arms um, can expand the mind so that so that they um, uh, grow and then they eventually become a bipedal uh, creature as us. And um, with the ability of some uh, reptilians, they can um, change the color of their skin to... Um, to uh, blend in to its environments um yet we as human beings if i start to use a little bit of deduction we as humans can very quickly detect 
even the slightest difference between um, our voices between each other, our faces, um, our skin tone, um, our hair, all of those kind of things. For the ability for a, um, a totally, like in, in the animal kingdom, for a totally diff different um, species to have any kind of resemblance to us would just be absolutely incredible. Um, and the actual, um, I think there's meant to be some sort of a th thing where they're meant to interbreed with the human species. Um, there's certain levels of chromosomes which cannot be sort of, um, you, like say we cannot um, breed with uh, monkeys because we haven't got the same amount of chromosomes. So you, you, you're really smashing so many sort of levels of uh, logic-based deduction that it doesn't really come into the realm of uh, what is true. Um, so you've got this um, perspective where people say that they've seen it happen and this is true, and then you've got these funny crafted videos which are just mo mockeries of, well, not mockeries, but they're just they're trying to sort of um, show that it's true, whether you see these lizard eyes flick up for a second, but I guess the, uh, in the out realms of a video, it's always uh, can be uh, created by itself. So you've got all of these little sort of elements. Um, that, that's always the hardest one. I, to validate, there's, there's some fantastic stuff which he comes out with, especially with the nature of reality and, and all of those things, which um, definitely inspires the mind and get it ticking over. And I, I do recommend... Um, reviewing that stuff but always have a little sense of um skeptical ske skepticism with um david ike um or well with everything that that you pursue and uh, look and listen to from from somebody always have a level um, of um skepticism because um there are there's um you can be taken up into a sort of world storm. Um, the mind is can play incredible tricks with you. There is, um, you you are born with um, certain um, sort of emotions where you want to be, you want to feel that you are special, um, and. Uh, so you can definitely hook into those emotions. You, um, there's definitely a hook for for them to say that you've. Uh, there is always a hook there to say that you've been oppressed, um, and um, you are special. And yeah, so you you've always got those. Um, those drivers inside you which can be um, set upon and can craft your mind into such an extent that you um, you no longer challenge your reality anymore and you never use critical thinking to anything anymore and you are in a belief system and you're told not to question your belief system any further and the people around you will dissociate themselves from you when you start to question the belief system um, because it's ingrained in potentially their profit, profit, um, profit motive or even uh, just for their self-belief and the nature of their, their reality and all those kind of things. So um, once you understand that people do not like uh, being questioned of those um, subjects and do not put forward fantastic arguments i've tr i've seen um david ike trying to be questioned on this before and um he he gets very angered by the questioning which occurs um and um that didn't seem good for me and it didn't feel good in my gut anyway f from that perspective and um when you turn to real f um to philosophers in the past they you you have the art of the argument which is a very important thing and you would hope that the there will be like a, a good basis of evidence and uh, important rebuttals as to the evidence that is produced um 
you you get with an argument with David Icke is that you'll get that um, there is there is evidence out there. People have seen it, and um, why can't you see that um, these things are possible? Your mind is enclosed and it's encaved in this sort of uh, still in this trapped mind, and you really just haven't pushed yourself into the bar- um, boundaries of um, uh, like holistic thinking and. Um, it's sort of it's not necessarily a an answer and it's not on a rebuttal and you're not going into the factual points of the the uh, the questioning of these of um like the, this reptilian creature um i do think that it like the the interesting thing about the reptilian creature is that it's i guess it's sort of uh it creates the sort of um, the ideal of the narcissist in a politician where um, the narcissist will pursue their own means and make themselves like um, trying to get people to love them. But eventually it all becomes about themselves and um, they become sort of evil and they don't think about anything else other than themselves and how they can attain their gains. And um, how they can create their own sort of uh, individual sort of group structures where they can um, train up people and they can mark, um, they can um, create this isolated faction which can control the world and control the, the, the span of money and all those kind of things. It it, it just does. It seems to me that we're we're just describing. Um, Uh, reptilian sort of behavior with narcissism reptilian like a reptilian is like oh, well, a reptile is just a very sort of um uh is an animal which only just thinks by, by itself and is only trying to um it's tr- trying to just uh take what it what it can take from the system and um eat and uh, reproduce and not think about its others and is not a a communal sort of animal so it it sort of it does tie up and um there is a word for this i can't think of what it is where you um start to um where you turn um like teddy bears into actual walking characters and all those kind of things it is sort of it's a, it's a good name for that so there is there's an interesting thing maybe if david Icke just went to the point of just saying that the the actual behavior is reptilian and um then he's got some he's got some good arguments there but when he says that there is like a independent reptilian race and that there's an independent um uh, uh aliens which are fighting for us which are trying to um, which are trying to dominate the world, and we're gonna turn in. Um, and um, the path which is heading is um a sort of nineteen eighty four scenario. Um, with with the with the um the breakdown of liberty, which there there is some sort of elements of truth of what the, what is being mentioned here. The um the pursuit of liberty for the Humans is probably the the greatest sort of uh, um, exercise which we could ever um, enter upon, and they're very good, valid arguments um, from David. But um, I really wish he would put forward rebuttals, good arguments, and. Um, not leave it to the thing of um, uh, correlation is um, is is what it is. So this, this um, correlation is causation, where um, that there definitely can, if the evolution's happened here, evolution can happen there, and um, be it allowed to really sort of take each question and um, deduct it as to what is true if this can if this can happen or not um that would be great levels of 
um, deduction. And when it comes to um, question any further, um, it wouldn't come back in a rebuttal of your mind is closed, your mind is truncated, you um, you have a very sort of small perspective on the world, and you're not opening your mind to what is um, what is really around us. Um, so yeah, so that's the beginning of the path that I've taken so far. Um, this is just, um, I guess this is going to be part one, um, because I've got a lot further to go with this. And um, I've got to start my day somehow. Anyway, um, it's been very good to speak to you. It's a bit of a challenge to go through these subjects because it's sort of uh, walking across sort of uh, personal aspects of my life. I thank you for your time and patience with me. And um, I will speak to you soon. Thank you very much.